Since Atari Lynx was successfully launched, many of us just wanted to try it out and catch all the fun, but suddenly, Atari Lynx stopped giving us the fun we expected, leaving us to wonder why Atari Lynx failed. Gaming fans will never forget Atari as one of the original console entrants in an industry that continues to grow exponentially. Let's be honest, Atari had a very good idea, but the Lynx is just proof that even good ideas are not always enough. Atari tried to keep its success going, but unfortunately, it was unable to do that. The story of the Atari Lynx begins in 1986. Two developers from Amiga, RJ Michael and Dave Needle, who both manufactured personal computers, were asked to create a handheld gaming console by one of their former managers now working at Epix. The meeting was what led both Needle and Michael to the Epix design team. Development for Lynx, also known as Handy, started in early 1986 and was finished in 1987. Safe to say, something powerful was created. At the start of the launch, Atari shipped 50,000 units of Lynx in the US with a limited launch in New York and sold 90% according to the report. Atari sold approximately 500,000 units in 1990 and late 1991. It was reported that Atari sales estimates were around 800,000, which Atari claimed was within its expected projections. Fast forward to four years later, sales have increased to approximately 7 million units when combined with the Game Gear. In comparison, 16 million units of Game Boy were sold around the same year. That's because of its much longer battery life, ruggedness, half price, bundling with the smash hit Tetris, and superior game library. Game Boy came as an effort to create a runaway hit to games that were similar to Sony and the Walkman for music, and it became the first type to be produced in the late 80s. It was a hit that lasted for nine years until the release of the color variant in 1998. But before Sega could come out with Game Gear, Atari was determined to get in on the action. Their design was more powerful and innovative than Sega, but it was a failure. Atari Lynx was sold for $179.99, and it has a size of two and a half Game Boys handheld in the landscape. This made us wonder where exactly is the portable handheld console that Lynx is supposed to be? But looking at the specs, which include a color LCD screen capable of displaying so many colors over 4,000 and a 16-bit processor. At that time, we could say, Lynx was a future product judging by the hardware, but the customers thought otherwise. To the customers, the Lynx was just seen as something below the Game Boy. You really can't blame anyone for that, especially when you take your time to see what the Game Boy brought to us. Is it the Nintendo's handheld having Tetris bundled in with every Game Boy, alongside its superb battery life, or the cheaper price and design? The Lynx has over 75 titles with notable games such as Double Dragon, Ninja Gaiden, Pit Fighter, Rampage, and many more that were available, but it just wasn't enough. Customers were not having it. Long battery life was way important to them, and also a long library of games with good design that will make them keep coming back. Unfortunately, the Lynx just wasn't any of that. Then Atari did something else. A second generation of the Lynx called the Lynx 2. It was released in July 1991, which is two years after the launch of the Lynx, which is the original. Thankfully, this one featured a smaller and better design. It also came with longer battery life, and even the headphone jack was stereo output. Wow, what an improvement! You would think the Lynx, too, would be unbeatable and stay in the market for long years, but no, it was too late by then. Atari already made a mistake and a major one on what made it the Lynx good. Even developers were not having it. They soon left the Lynx to create Game Boy and Game Gear games instead. You see, the major problem was that Atari couldn't figure out what the customers wanted. Or maybe they knew and thought it wasn't important. And so, regardless of having a color screen and a 16-bit processor, many people just couldn't see the reason to own a handheld that only offered the games that were mainly ports of what came out before. It was even at that point that Atari shifted focus and concentrated on their Jaguar console, just when the Game Boy Pocket arrived. Atari stopped producing the Lynx in 1995, and since then, we haven't heard about the Lynx. Some say the marketing team didn't do well in showcasing the Lynx 2 enough, but what do you think caused Atari Lynx's failure?